Introducing a priori. Welcome to today's presentation. Compression molding, a viable lightweight alternative to sheet metal stamping. An introduction to compression molding of sheet molding compound and a priori's new representative manufacturing model. For those who don't know me, my name is Andy Clark. I'm a product manager here at a priori. I'm responsible for the development of our sheet metal, plastic molding and composites manufacturing models. I'm a qualified mechanical engineer with an industrial background in oil field services. I started my career in field operations, installing downhole oil and gas equipment on offshore oil rigs. Subsequent to that, I spent five years working in the engineering and manufacturing technology center, where I worked in product design, design for manufacture and production engineering. I had the privilege of working in a facility that had in-house manufacturing, assembly and testing facilities, spending significant time on the shop floor, often getting very polite feedback from the machinists and technicians on how we could better engineer our products. Since then, I worked for three years as an expert services consultant here at a priori, prior to moving to product management in January of this year. Here's an overview of today's agenda. A quick section of my <coughs> A quick section on my introduction to compression molding and one of the applications of compression molded parts, a brief history of the industrial adoption of compression molded parts, a review of the compression molding process itself, a demonstration of a priori's new compression molding manufacturing model, and lastly, a summary and details on accessing this manufacturing model. I was first made aware of compression molding over 10 years ago before I'd set foot in an engineering office or on a shop floor. After college, I wanted nothing more than take a break from the merry-go-round of full-time education. I saved up some money. I flew from Scotland to Canada's west coast to a resort called Whistler to live the life of a ski bum. As I departed for Canada, my girlfriend also embarked on a trip of a lifetime with her best friend with the aim of finishing up in Canada to beat me afterwards. A few months passed and the day finally arrived that my girlfriend was finishing her trip by coming to Canada. Excited, I decided to make my way to the airport to meet her. I decided to hitchhike, as was common, common among seasonal ski workers, down from the mountains to the city. Standing in this very gravel lay-by you see in the, in the picture, I have my thumb out. After a while, plenty of cars passed me by. Eventually, a beautiful supercar indicated and pulled up into the lay-by. Having hitchhiked fairly regularly, I was used to trucks and beater ski vans stopping to pick me up, but never cars like this. I leaned into the window to check I hadn't confused the tourist into thinking I was in distress, or they hadn't just stopped to take a call. Luckily, I was genuinely being offered a ride. It transpired that the owner had made a good living in construction and had regularly hitchhiked himself when he was younger. On this occasion, he was heading to Vancouver to pick up a radar for his boat and thought he'd give me a ride. You're probably wondering at this point why I'm telling you the story about hitchhiking. Well, that supercar that picked me up was this. A 2006 Chevrolet Corvette Le Mans. Being from the UK and growing up watching the show Top Gear, the car program hosted by three middle-aged, middle-class man-children, I've been led to believe that American supercars weren't in the same league as the likes of Ferraris or Lamborghinis. And as such, I had very, very little knowledge of the details of this machine. As I chatted to the gentleman behind the wheel, cruising the beautiful mountain road from Whistler to Vancouver, I was given an education on the construction on the car in which I was traveling. I was enlightened to understand that the car had a predominantly plastic body panels, providing significant weight savings as well as corrosion resistance while maintaining the strength and finish of other cars' sheet metal equivalents. I was further informed that this wasn't a new technology or recent development on the latest model, but a strategy that Corvette development team had first implemented way back in 1953 with fiberglass panels before switching in 1973 to the technology I'll be discussing today, compression molded sheet molding compound. If we look at the Corvette model years line up here, it was the C3, the third one along, where SMC was first used. It's still used today, and as the material engineering continues to progress, gains are still being seen. The new ultralight SMC material allowed the C7 Corvette to shave off an impressive 37 pounds or 17 kilos from the body panels of the car. You may think that all this technology would push up the price of the Corvette significantly. However, in 2020, the C8 had a sticker price of only $60,000, a fraction of what you pay for other supercars of similar performance. With all the benefits I just listed, you may ask yourself why there aren't more cars with SMC compression molded panels. Compression molding SMC has somewhat 
been a victim of global economics. Compression molded SMC first became commercially available back in the 1960s. It was a somewhat niche technology at the time. It really began to gain traction after the 1990 oil price shock when Iraq invaded Kuwait. This caused automakers to feverently investigate any means to make cars more efficient through both engine technology and weight reduction. This saw cars such as the Mitsubishi Eclipse emerge that featured compression molded SMC panels. One of the early attractions of compression molded SMC was that it was highly heat resistant and could survive the very common automotive e-coat process, allowing OEMs to mount class A and structural SMC parts to car bodies in white and let them travel through a normal, normal production line rather than installing them at a later stage at a higher cost. However, just as SMC parts were begin, being specced on vehicles, issues arose around a phenomenon known as paint popping. This caused highly publicized line disruption and led to a mainstream abandonment of SMC in parallel with reducing oil prices, tempering the rush to increase efficiency. SMC material technology, however, improved at an astounding rate. By 2003, resolving the paint pop issues evolved, and by 2008, programs had begun uh, to consider SMC again. However, this was the worst possible time as the 2008 global financial crisis bit and the automotive industry went into freefall. The industry again defaulted to tried and tested stamped sheet metal. By 2012, the economic recovery had arrived and with it, new industrial standards on fuel economy and emissions, coupled with new metallic competitors in the form of magnesium and aluminium. Compression molded SMC parts have slowly been gaining traction in the industry, especially in the lower volume applications such as supercars like the Corvette, but also truck manufacturers, agricultural vehicle manufacturers and commercial airline cosmetic part manufacturers. Specking compression molded parts to reduce weight, increase efficiency and resist corrosion. With the advent of electric vehicles, a clear need to decarbonize while also increasing efficiency, right now is the perfect time to utilize the benefits of compression molding. Let me now talk about SMC material and the compression molding process itself. SMC is a category of high strength composite materials, commonly consists of a thermosetting resin, polyester, vinyl ester, or epoxy typically, reinforced with chopped fibers like glass, aramid, or carbon. The SMC material can be tailored to meet specific requirements. Through the use of specific additives, the final part properties can have enhanced structural properties, electrical resistance, flame retardancy, and pigmentation. The raw SMC material is provided in rolls and has a dough-like consistency. In terms of the process, SMC materials cut from a roll using a standard knife and weighed to create what we call a charge, which is loaded into the mold tools. The charge can be a single piece or multiple pieces which are distributed throughout the mold tool. The material charge is not cut into a blank that corresponds to the shape of the final part. It's just the required mass of material and at times can be folded and distributed within the within the mold tools. The metal mold tools, which are mounted within a hydraulic press, are heated to enable curing of the material. The match tool encloses to compress the material charge and disperse the material throughout the mold cavity. The heated press remains closed to allow the part to cure. This typically takes between five to 10 minutes, depending on part thickness and resin properties. The required cure time is ultimately determined by the maximum part thickness, as any material which is not cured during this process will remain in a viscous state. The operator then removes the part from the mold. Flash is typically produced at the parting line of the tool. This flash is typically very thin and is removed by the operator, either using a handheld tool or alternatively via a CNC router or water jet on a jig. Press operations include cutting and weighing the material charge, tool cleaning, release agent application, loading the material charge, mold open close, pressure application and curing, part unloading and optional flash trimming with some operation conducted in parallel as illustrated above. Pressing curing time is generally in the range of five to 10 minutes or more. While the part cures, the operator prepares a charge of material for the next part and optionally trims flash manually. And the last part unloaded from the mold. The cycle time for the press operation is computed as the greater of the time for loading, pressing, unloading, and charge preparation and manual flash trimming. Secondary operations include offline part trimming and any additional desired surface treatment and other secondary processes. Offline part trimming involves the use of either a five axis thread or a water jet cutter to remove flash, and also to make any internal holes or cutouts that are not created in the mold. 
Here we'll see a visualization of the compression molding process. We have the charge mounted on the left hand side and the compression zone represented. We'll then see how the mold closes and disperses the charge to form the part's final shape and then allows the part to cure. Here we can see the charge dispersing as the mold tools close, reaching the extremities of the mold. It's then held while the part cures to produce the final geometry. The flash from the outside is removed and those five holes that we can see on the left hand side of the part are created via, via a secondary process such as rendering. The commercial sweet spot for compression molded panels is typically in the range of 20,000 to 200,000 annual units being bookended by resin transfer molding on the lower side and stamp sheet metal on the higher side. This range lends itself to applications such as trucking, agricultural vehicles, lower volume personal vehicles and aircraft interiors amongst others. However, there's an industry where the flexibility of the material properties has an equal appeal to the lightweight characteristics of FSMC, and that's in electric vehicles, specifically electric vehicle and battery enclosures. The industry trend was examined in September's Composites World article, where this excerpt in particular caught my eye. An SMC compression molded battery enclosure was benchmarked against an aluminium card and counterpart, offering 15% mass savings, 20% cost savings, and a 45% reduction in CO2 footprint. All of this while maintaining mechanical strength and toughness, enhanced thermal and electrical insulation properties, electrostatic discharge protection, and radio frequency interference protection. I imagine all these points are why we had so many requests from customers to develop a compression molding manufacturing model. I'm now going to give a demonstration of a priori's model. And if you see this slide, you'll probably notice a familiarity between the battery enclosure cover on the right hand side and the model we have here as a representative demo part. Here's a priori's compression molding uh, manufacturing model. It lives within our plastic molding process group. In order to ensure compression molding routing, we need to select a sheet metal compound material. As I mentioned, we have polyester, vinyl ester, epoxy with a range of additives available. We can also look at the routing here. If we go to edit, routing selection. We can see that we've selected compression selection molding. Uh, compression molding has been selected, and that in this instance we have a secondary router operation, and no surface treatment or other secondary processes currently applied. We have a number of process setup options to allow you to tailor your your uh, model. So if I go in here, we can have a look at our process setup options. You may see similarities with uh, some of our plastic molding uh, as a set of options. However, there are a number that I should point out that are specific to compression molding. At the top, we have the number of tools it allows you to understand how much investment will be required to produce the parts um, entered per your volume. One important process setup option is our mold closure type. So our type of mold tool. So there's three options. There is flash, positive and semi positive. Flash type is the least efficient in terms of utilization with a positive type mold having almost no uh, flash, which is the most efficient and semi positive sits in the middle of the two. We can select the material that our uh, mold tools are made out of. Also our part ejection method. The default is air puppets, but you can also subject, you can also select hydraulic ejection. If I go further down, you can see that our we have a, a option to select the cavity finish here with this drop down. And by default, 50% uh, of the tool area is is uh, covered by the cavity finish, which is typical with a with an A side and a B side, and only the A side being the cosmetic. We also have um, 
additional override so we can uh, override what the pressure is. So we have our minimum maximum recommended for the material, our calculated value, and you can have user override. You can change the mass of the charge if you know it. The number of charge pieces that need to be distributed throughout the mold tool. And this next one is internal cutouts are capped is true or false. So this would be an example of an internal cutout. And that gives a selection of whether or not it is um, shut off or the cutout needs formed uh, in a secondary process such as routering. We can see in our, our part details tab some additional uh, information such as our mold size, our nominal wall thickness for the part, our required press force, the selected machine press force, the cure time, and the last one here gives an indication of which is the long pole operation, so which is the longest operation um, associated with, with manufacturing that part. As well as having the manufacturing model, uh, we also offer design for manufacturer feedback in commercial molding. Firstly, Apiori identifies instances where a high press force will be required, leading to a higher machine overhead cost. Apiori will also provide the engineer with feedback on where the thickness varies significantly throughout the part, potentially leading to longer cycle times and thus costs. Instances where cutouts require secondary machining due to the fact that they are not in the draw direction are highlighted to engineers. Lastly, Apiori will provide feedback on undercuts, either classifying them as dialogue, where the part geometry physically prevents removal, or what we have coined a no-cost undercut, this being a minor undercut that could be flexed off the tool. Although it's possible that this is not optimal as a situation could lead to a longer cycle time, potentially lower yields due to damaged parts and premature tool wear. So in summary, a priori now offers a compression molding process simulation. We give design for manufacturer feedback and have rich manufacturing data for trade-off analysis and negotiation. Compression molding is available as of our 2022 R1 release. It's licensed at three cost model credits. And please contact your account teams for further details on how to include compression molding in your deployment. Thank you very much for your time today. A priori, making profitability and sustainability a reality for a better world.